how marketing is affected is directly how your pipeline looks. And too many people make decisions on, well, this is what I want without even really ever looking at their pipeline or sales funnel. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Building a Better CAC by Comexis, a podcast dedicated to connecting the space between your revenue goals and sales and marketing initiatives. I'm Matthew McGordy, the social media content producer here at Comexis. I'm Len Ward, the managing partner at Comexis. So today we're going to be discussing how pipeline deficiencies can affect a marketing campaign. So Len, why don't you start us off? How can pipeline deficiencies affect a marketing campaign? So that's, you know, one of the most interesting things we get from a marketing request uh, or marketing campaign request is a lot of times companies will come in and say, you know, I need more leads uh, or we'd like to do a branding campaign. Um, And they kind of start talking about certain types of things that they would like to accomplish. They would like to have a campaign, a pay-per-click campaign on Google. Uh, Maybe they're looking to run an audio campaign on Spotify, or maybe they're looking to do a little display advertising uh, on some sort of programmatic platform. And we always step back and say, you know, well, before we do that, because we know as an agency, you're going to judge an agency on the results of the campaign you want to do. We always take, say, let's take a step back and identify what are the problems with your funnel? Like if we were to lay out your funnel, we actually do lay out the funnel for the client. We say, let's take a look at your actual sales funnel, your pipeline, whatever business you're in, there's a pipeline or funnel for everything you do. And we say, let's take a look at it and let's try to identify the deficiencies within that pipeline or that funnel. Because the deficiencies are where you need to market. You know, let's just say you're coming back and you're saying, you know, um, you know, we need more leads. But then we go and take a look at your, you know, we look at your leads and we're looking at the money you're investing. We realize that you're kind of doing fairly well. Your cost per lead is really good. Maybe it's a little below industry standard and you're doing well. Your marketing team's doing well. Your internal marketing team's doing well or whoever. But we realize if we look at lower in the funnel that your close rate's bad. So we may say, well, your close rate's at 25%. And if we go compare that to your industry standards, let's just say it's 50%, we would say you don't need a pay-per-click campaign to get more leads. This isn't about getting more leads. You need to start looking at the bottom of the funnel and what can we do from that marketing perspective? Is there an email campaign? Or are we properly retargeting? Are we geofencing companies that maybe have a proposal you know, out for you and so forth? We can kind of get into the weeds at another point. And much the same way where if an individual comes to us and they say, okay, well, you know, we need leads because leads are what everybody would like to have, but we don't have the money to do a lot of money on pay-per-click. Then I come in and I say, okay, well, let's, what are you doing from a branding perspective? Are you advertising them from a branding perspective? Are you at least trying to, you know, build your name up a little bit? Because if you want a lower cost for a lead or you don't quite have the money for a lead, you're going to need to spend less money and build your brand. And we say, okay, we can do that. And then lastly, what we could do is maybe we go look at your past clients and say, let's look at past clients and let's see if we can maybe market to them on email marketing. Maybe we can target them on social media uh, because yeah, maybe they're not, they're leads that are dead leads or maybe they're companies that don't work with you anymore, but maybe we can revive it and lower the cost. So long-winded answer, but you know, how marketing is affected is directly how your pipeline looks. And too many people make decisions on, well, this is what I want without even really ever looking at their pipeline or sales funnel. Long winded, but there's your answer. How often do you notice that people don't have a good idea or a good picture of what their pipeline is and, 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 and really why can't they identify these deficiencies as easily? So I think about 20 to 25% of people that come to us kind of know what their pipeline looks like especially if they have a really good sales model, like there's a sales team in place um, or there's a great sales process in place. Because a lot of times they're coming to us and they have a, a great CRM. They're using a sales force. They're using a pipe drive or a copper or something along those lines. And they really know what their funnels look like. And when that's the case, we actually think that's great because when that's the case, then we can look at that. You know, We can kind of portal into what their pipelines are and identify what the problems are and say, okay, here's how we would market and here's what we would market from an intelligence standpoint. You know, the other 75%, you know, really don't know. And I'm kind of guessing the percentages there. But I think the biggest problem, the biggest lie that's been sold 
to companies right now and has been sold to agencies right now. It's almost like the agencies are selling it to the client, the client selling it to the agencies is this insane, ridiculous thing that you have to get leads, leads, leads. Yeah, we all want leads. But if you don't have your sales process right, if you don't have a full funnel marketing campaign, right, meaning you're properly allocating money across your brand, yes, to get leads, then maybe you have a sales process where you're marketing to people who have proposals or demos or whatever it may be called in your pipeline. And then ultimately, you're not marketing properly to the individuals who are about to close. It doesn't matter how many leads you get. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of times we've stumbled upon companies where their close rates 20%, 30%, when industry rates are even 50%. When industry rates are, you know, 50, 60, 70, or 80 percent, and that's the biggest problem there, that that right there that we see, is that a lot of times people, and this is you're talking to a sales guy telling you this. My entire life has been sales. Too many people have way too much faith in their sales team. They're like, well, my sales team closed every single thing that comes through the front door. We closed 90 percent of the business. You realize really quick when you work with Comex is that your sales team is not closing 90 percent of the business, and then they, it always comes back to. Well, it's poor leads. Is it poor leads or is it a poor sales process? Or is your product maybe just like somebody else's product? So again, a little long-winded, but so half the people we see, they kind of have an idea what their pipeline is. The other half we see is they just have burned in their head that they have to get all these leads because that's what everybody tells them and it's cost per lead. and That's all they go on. And, and you're really doing yourself a major disservice because at that point, you're not building your brand. Um, you're, you're literally just building up a bunch of leads that you're hoping on closing uh, yeah, and I know they become clients or they've worked with you in the past, you've built a brand, I get it. But then at that point, you are 100% at the mercy of lead platforms, meaning what is a charge for you to get a lead on Google pay-per-click? If you're an attorney, what is it cost to get one off Avo? You know, if you are a construction company, what is it cost on Angie's list and so forth? So you're at that mercy. And when you're at that mercy of obtaining leads, and then you got to pay an agency to do it and get creative and all that other stuff. Then, then, you, then you're at the problem where you're behind the eight ball in marketing. So how does our, our process help identify these, these sort of issues? You, you briefly touched on it earlier, but you know, what is it about our process that helps us so easily go, okay, the issue is you're not getting enough leads. Okay, the issue is actually that your sales funnel isn't doing very well. Your, your sales team is, is not performing well for whatever reason. I mean, the sales teams can perform well just because they're, they're not selling well. Maybe they don't have the support they need, things like that. What is it about our sales process that makes it possible for us to identify these things for a client? So it's, it's more our financial auditing process. So that's kind of what really is able to identify this. So when we run a client through a, a, a campaign financial audit, if we're trying to identify, you know, a return on a campaign they're running, or what we like to do is we like to run marketing financial audits where we look at everything all told. You know, normally if we look at, if we look at the number they're at, the, the number they're at, they're a million dollars for the year, um, you know, we step, you know, we, the, the, basically our audit, we, the entire thing we do is we come in and we basically say, here's your revenue. You know, here's what your pipeline currently looks like. Here's the campaign that you're running. That's addressing pipeline deficiencies. And here's your rate of return. It's, it's like, it's cyborg. Like there's no wiggle room. There's no nothing. It's like, you know, you know, here's your investment and here's your return on investment. And that's just it. And, and then, you know, as we move into another phase and we start consulting with clients and we dig a little deeper on the audit, you know, we'll say, okay, well, you're at a million, but what did you really want to be at? Well, you know, well, we should be at 2 million this year or whatever. Look, and I know the caveat is we're, we're moving out of COVID. We hope, we know that the numbers are a little wonky right now, but let's just say there's a company who they even feels if even with COVID, they should be at $2 million. The audit is really the DNA of your company, not the audit, I'm sorry. The, the pipelines are the DNA of your company. Because once we extract that, we look at it, look at your pipeline and say, well, if you're not at $2 million, then it kind of sets off like a series of events. We then look at your funnel and say, okay, well, you're not at $2 million because maybe you don't have enough leads in the pipeline. There's leads. You know, maybe you're not close, you know, we identify that you're not closing enough people, you know, uh, or we realize that, you know, maybe you're not moving a lead to like the qualified stage uh, too often. Or maybe if we're looking at your funnel, we realize that you're spending so much money on leads, but you have nothing going on for your brand. So we look at your funnel and we're able to pick one or two things, sometimes the entire funnel, and, and come back to you and say, okay, the reason you're not at $1 million or $2 million or $1 million or $2 million, right? That's the number we're going for, is because of these fundamental deficiencies in your funnel. To address those fundamental deficiencies in your funnel, you need to be on XYZ platforms. 
And that's where you come back and say, this is where you need the market across these platforms, Facebook, Google, trade shows. Yes, they're coming back, networking events, maybe some traditional. That's what's going to help you really work through your funnel. And that sets off a whole other conversation. Okay, but what does the investment have to be and so forth? So that's, that's for another conversation. This is more focusing on the funnels and how they really are the DNA of your, of your company and basically expose your marketing flaws very quickly. So that's kind of how we arrive at it. All right. Well, thank you, Len. So if you guys want to check out more about our financial audit um, or in our process in general, you can visit us at comexus.com. We got some great information on there that you can learn, um, you know, what it is that we're doing with these financial audits, how we're, we're determining these, uh, these deficiencies in, in your pipeline and all of that. Uh, that's all for today's episode of Building a Better CAC. Check us out on comexus.com, YouTube, and anywhere you can get your podcasts and follow us on Twitter at comexus. Thanks for listening.